if someone doesn't like you or like your style, then that's fine. It'd be hard to work with someone who didn't like me. I'd rather them just tell me or <laughs> reject exactly. me straight up. This is Journey to Point V, where you can find success stories of people who have achieved the same goals you're striving for. I'm your host, Lucia Chomo, and it's my hope that these stories will provide motivation for your own journey to point B. Let's begin. Jesse, so very nice to have you on the show today. Welcome. Thank you so much, Lucia. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. So my show, as you know, the purpose for it is to help people be inspired by hearing other people's stories about how they reach goals. And I know that you've reached a goal that you worked for a very long time. And I would turn it back to you to walk us through what is the goal that you have achieved that you're particularly happy about. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for this opportunity to share. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. So I... I'm an artist that does portrait art and I, I started drawing when I was a child and actually it was, it was triggered by trauma, which a lot of artists are. Mm -hmm. uh, my father died when, when he, when I was young and, um, I was in class in third grade and my teacher, she, I started crying in class and she brought me back to the back of the classroom and she was like, why don't you try to just draw him, just draw you and him. And so I started drawing from, from then on. Um, and my mom got me into some, um, art tutoring when I was 14, an amazing artist that happened to live by and, and I was homeschooled. So I did three hour long art lessons with her. Um, and that turned out to be an extremely great um, thing because she taught me everything that I needed to know. She taught me how to draw, how to paint. Uh, she taught me a little bit about marketing and how to sell my work. And so I started selling commission portrait work when I was 14. Um, and I've been doing it since. Um, so part of my, part of the reaching the goal now, since I'm 40 now, so it's been a while. Um, but I never wanted to do art as a business. Never. Like, mm -hmm. and I was even told, don't go to art school. I never did go to art school. I went to, to school for, um, for medicine. I thought that was the way to go. And after some other journeys, I realized, wow, I, I've been an artist this whole time. I need to take this seriously. I like it. It, it, it tends to make other people really happy, which is a huge part of my pull to it. Um, I'm very humanities driven. So yeah, a few years ago, I, I put, I just started putting my all into it and I'm happily getting commission after commission. I've got multiple big projects lined up, um, which, which is fantastic. I've got, um, some more things like I'm going to be doing some cohort teachings. So things are just rolling along exponentially, really. My thing is, as soon as you take art seriously, you can find tons of opportunity. And that's what my message is, I guess, for other people mm -hmm. who are really looking to find a way to be an artist. I mean, and I think now more than ever, creatives have opportunity with the internet and social media and networking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry for the loss of your father, but I th think at the same time, what you share, it's such a good example that we can take something negative that happened and something beautiful can come out of it. And now you have always that memory that you lost your father, but through art, you keep him alive. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> that's a great way to sum it up. Yeah, 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 that's true. You mentioned that for artists now, it's it it's a wonderful opportunity to use mm -hmm. social media and what it's available for them in order yeah. to become uh, the artists that can can do this for a living. They become commission artists. What has worked for you in terms of mm. social media and what you're doing? Uh, so I am on a multiple platforms. And the only one I really post on regularly is LinkedIn. However, I've built friendships over a long period of time on others as well, like Facebook. So it, it, it does seem to be that word of mouth seems to be the best, um, best way to get commissioned works. Mm -hmm. And it's really 
easy to get word of mouth because mostly if people are excited about what you're doing, they're just going to share. And, and, and portrait work is so intimate that, um, they're, they'll let you know if they don't like it, but, <laughs> but they'll also let you know if they love it and they'll let everybody else know too. So, um, for me, it's, it's a combination of just being in touch with people and just being authentic with them. And then, uh, people know people who know people and you just, you just get to know them. So, um, just being authentic is, is the way to go with that too, because then it's easy. Then it's an easy flow. You don't have to, um, I don't worry about, you know, anything. And if they, if someone doesn't like you or like your style, then that's fine. I mean, it'd be hard to work with someone who didn't like me. I'd rather them just tell me or <laughs> reject exactly. me straight up. That's fine. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So for me right now, LinkedIn's a lot of fun. I'm learning, I'm learning more every day on that, that platform. Um, and then just keeping in touch with all my friends on the other platforms as well. Yeah, what I love about LinkedIn is that it's such a professional network. It never happened to me to have any negative comments or any com like people are very professional, are really nice. And I, what I learned from you is just putting yourself out there, showing up authentically can really help you build your business without even have to do any outreach. It's more inbound marketing. Yeah. That works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I totally agree. I, highly suggest LinkedIn because of how professional people are. They're going to be nice. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Jesse, in your journey to become a commission portrait artist, what were some of the barriers that mm -hmm. would come in the way that had the potential to take you off your path? Hmm. hmm. There are quite a few. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so there's internal barriers, right? So am I qualified? Do I know anything about business? Am I going to get burnt out? Um, mm -hmm. uh, I can't charge people. I mean, like I didn't know how to charge people. So I had to overcome that. And that took years. That took some time. Um, but I was young, you know, so when I started, so it did take time to, to learn, um, and I learned some techniques for that and, um, they're, they're actually pretty easy. You just have, you know, well, if anyone wants to know, they can holler at us. Right. But, um, cause I don't want to spend the whole time with that, but yeah. And then there's other barriers. So I tried, um, doing different versions of art. So I've worked at an art center that turned out not to be what I was looking for. It was just, it's a different thing. And I, and I enjoyed it, but, um, and then I tried opening uh, a business that was an art retreat and that kind of fell. So I learned, um, and that was during 2020 too, or 2020 hit. I lost money in that. Like I threw so much into it. Um, and I think it was going to be great, but, um, you know, with nobody being able to travel and, and everything that, that really, uh, was a barrier. So, I've learned that you don't really need much. You just need your art supplies and to put yourself out there and everything is pretty much free. You don't have to go into debt to do it. You mentioned a few barriers and one that stood out to me and it comes up in conversation, especially with small business owners or as they're starting to launch their business is to ask for money for their services, mm -hmm. which I think it has mm -hmm. both, like it has a lot to do with mindset and things like that. So I was wondering mm -hmm. if you would share how, how did you yeah. overcome that barrier? So, well, first anything worthwhile is going to be challenging. And so if it's, and that's okay. So there's going to be the, a little bit of an imposter syndrome that that'll sneak in and, um, Lucia, you have really good, uh, tools to help people through that, which I've also worked with you a little bit on, and I thank you for it. So that's one thing. And there are, there are strategies to get through that. Um, but simply for me, for figuring out how to price, my suggestion for any artist out there is to take your work find other websites and other artists that are similar to yours. So they'll be either the same style, you know, the same amount of um, experience. And you can kind of base, at least start base, basing your prices off of other people's prices. Um, that way you don't under, under 
pay yourself um, Mm -hmm. and don't overpay yourself. So you never sell anything. Um, But, and over time doing, even just doing one commission work, selling one commission work at the price that you know is fair will build your confidence up so much uh, that you'll, you'll be just solid for the next one. And then also setting Mm -hmm. up your templates. So regarding the money, you have to come up with an estimation. You have to come up with an invoice. You want to break down all the different parts and why you're charging people the way you're charging. Mm -hmm. And once you have those templates in place, it's pretty easy just to fill them out for the next person and the next person. Um, So, yeah, there's a little bit upfront of research and building some some digital paperwork. Um, but after that, it's a lot easier than it's just customizing per person. Mm -hmm. So what I hear is first do your research, learn what's your value, where you are, and then be transparent about what you're charging and why are you charging? And you mentioned, yep. Simple formula. (laughs) (laughs) How about imposter syndrome? You mentioned that there, and I'm curious how yeah. how did that get in your way, and what did you do mm-hmm. about it? So, in the end, <laughs> for me, and I don't know if this is like this is not really scientific. I just had to ignore it mostly and um, tell myself what I know my strengths are. Um, that I. I know I'm experienced that I, I know I've sold so many pieces and my clients are extremely happy. So I have to remind myself that, which is really weird. I mean, think that I've, I've done well, so I should just know it, but imposter syndrome will attack you anyhow. (laughs) So you just have to ignore it and eventually it goes away. And at least it did for me. How did it attack you? Um, mostly it's just thoughts in my head, you know, uh, what do people think or, um, am I actually, is my work actually this valuable? Is my time actually this valuable? Just thoughts mostly coming in Mm -hmm. and nagging, Mm -hmm. nagging at you at the worst time. So you can't focus or, Mm -hmm. yeah. And having learned that lesson, like, what do you do now when those thoughts can try to creep in. Mm -hmm. So with the best of my ability, I have priced as fairly as possible. And I I think that that is pretty much all I can do and rely on it. Mm -hmm. I just have to, in the end, trust my instincts. And that's, that is difficult. That is difficult. And that's what happens in a solopreneur or, or artist journey. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna be alone a lot of the time because it'll be just you and your thoughts. You're gonna have to do it the way you think is best and just, just plowing through, I think. Um, and it does, it just gets so much easier too, really. Um, w- when you see that other people are willing to, to pay you what you're worth and, and you just start accepting it more too. A quick pause here. I have a favor to ask you. If you resonated with anything in this episode, I'm asking you to please subscribe to this channel this will help me bring you more guests with more inspirational stories to help you on your journey to point B. Now let's get back to our conversation. So imposter syndrome starts with a thought and Mm -hmm. goes away Mm -hmm. with a helpful thought, like Mm -hmm. really acknowledging that it's a thought and then taking the time to find evidence why that thought is not true, finding evidence why we're not an imposter. This is what I yes, I hear yes. from what you're sharing. Uh, and you put it very well. Yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Jesse, if another artist, a new artist would love to come on the same journey, like to go on the same journey as you mm-hmm. went, what would be your advice if you were to mentor them? So if they're starting at the very, very beginning. I would say just start and learn, learn your technique, spend some time doing it. Don't worry if it takes six months, a year, depends on how much time you can put into it. Um, But, or if you're already an artist and now you're just trying to learn how to, how to sell. So 
I would say start building your network if you haven't already. And it's really easy. Know you're in the long-term game, not a short-term game. Um, be authentic with everybody. Um, if you need help, reach out to reach out to anybody, any artist. Honestly, if you find an artist you like, um, they probably have an email that you can connect with them and, and, mm -hmm. and say, wow, this is really what I like. And I'd like to do, you know, what you're doing. How did you do it? Um, and they'll be willing to help you. Uh, also building a website. You can do that for free on so many great platforms. And that, that also starts um, organizing a portfolio online for people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So just, uh, and then what I had, I talked about a little bit ago was, um, so I have my little doggy here. So if you see me keeping, <laughs> oh, reaching out to so him, <laughs> he needs to be groomed, doesn't he? Um, so, uh, yeah. So look up other um, artists that are kind of like your skill set and start putting your pricing around there. If you want to start low, you can start low, but don't do it long, you know. Uh, as soon as you get that one bit of um, a reference, so ask ask your client to give you a reference or just to just to mm -hmm. mention, you know, what did what did they like, or they'll they'll probably tell you anyhow automatically because that's what happens mm -hmm. is that they will they'll let you know what they love about it, um, and that can that can go on your website. And so a little bit of social proof, a little bit of networking, getting a portfolio out there for people to see, all of that is you don't, it doesn't cost anything. So, um, and I keep saying that because I put my money in the wrong place before and, I, and you don't have to do that. You don't have to do all of that. You don't have to get a logo yet. You don't have to, you know, any of it. I mean, you can, and it, that's a fun thing, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a rabbit hole because there's so many different parts and it's, it's a lot of fun though. So please do it. Artists, we need you out there. We need you creatives. I love that. What uh, what I had to also learn is that you don't need a logo, you don't need a website, you don't need too much in order to start launching your business. Exactly. And then those can come slowly. But oftentimes we get so busy with these activities, the the branding, the everything to be perfect. And it just takes us away and away from our goal. And it's even harder and harder to launch until mm -hmm. we we feel like we need to be absolutely ready to launch because mm -hmm. we're never going to be ready. So yeah. yeah, start with whatever you can use, free resources. I love to see how the community now appreciates more someone who is starting and just trying to put everything together, even if they have a typo, even if the logo is misaligned, even if the branding is not totally put together, the video is a little bit blurry. It's totally mm -hmm. fine as long as you're doing and you're authentic and you, you, you work towards it. You don't need to have everything ready in order to start. And I I love to see that you you experience that the same way yeah yeah thank you yeah. that that is beautiful it's so true it's, it's a very supportive community out there now i'm curious what are some goals that you're working on now i want to do uh tutorials online uh for people who have um kind of neglected their creative side and maybe they're just stuck on scrolling digitally through their through their lives working you know maybe they're professionals and um they've never made time to do art so i'm trying to, to put together some some videos as well as just doing one-on-one -on -one tutorials and cohorts so i'm doing a little bit of that right now um mm -hmm. just starting the video part so I, i'm learning i'm learning a lot as i go um also, I've been working on doing more live event art. So, uh, for example, um, being at weddings and painting the bride and the groom during their cer ceremony. Um, so cool. It's really neat. And I'm going to a gala <laughs> soon where they have a jazz band. I'm going to paint all that um, for 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 people who are donating donating and um it's not it's just not going to be the regular old gala with a, you know a dinner mm -hmm. it's it's going to be mm -hmm. really unique and i'm glad i get to be a part of that um so yeah so there's there's multiple things i'm doing portraits um and i also like to do um 
I do like to give some away. So I also work with the SPCA, which is, you know what that is? That is for, um, it is, it's like an animal shelter. Mm. So when they're doing fundraising, um, I I'll give away a pet portrait for the highest bidder, that sort of thing. So, Mm -hmm. so they can raise some money. So always keeping the ball rolling. There's always, there's always more to do. If anyone from the listeners would love to get in contact with you, what would be their best way to do so? The best way is probably my website and it's jessiebergart.art. Um, then you can see what I do and you can connect with me anytime right there. I've got mm-hmm. a little form right on the front page. Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, it's at Jesse Bergart. Feel free to reach out there too. And you can find me on the other platforms as well. Facebook is Jesse Danielle Art. So that, that one's a little different. I got to switch it, but yeah. So I, I'd be happy to, to talk with anybody if you have any questions about starting your own art commissioned art life because it's it's a fun mm-hmm. journey and you can you can make money and and, and it's great <laughs> mm-hmm. yes and knowing that typically creatives are really passionate about the work mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like it's not necessarily like any type of job if a artist starts something it typically is uh, filled by so much passion and mm-hmm. it's such a wonderful thing to hear that there are artists like you that is encouraging and provides support and mentorship in order for them mm-hmm. to be able to make this their full-time opportunity so yeah. thank you so wonderful. much wonderful good yeah. well yeah and i would uh, one last can i do one last encouragement of course of course please Great. I I just want to, um, for you artists out there and creatives, you, your own voice is very unique. So unless you like to compete, you don't need to compete because your own style is your own style and no one can compete with you on that. Um, so just go out there and be you and and we are going to be cheering you on the whole time. (laughs) What a wonderful way to end this discussion. Thank you so much. (laughs) Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. 